Hello and welcome to my video tutorial series RPG in a Box. I am Carsten and in this episode we will add shadow and light effects to our game. Initially I planned it as a single episode, but then I split it apart in the first one, which is about global light settings, and the second one about object light settings. But before we start with light settings, I want to show you two very basic things. So you may have seen that I added a command in the previous episodes about navigation nodes. So there's a much easier way to delete navigation lines than ho uh, hovering over the node and pressing the delete key like this. You can simply hold the right mouse button and draw a line to, to delete a single navigation line. It's much easier and a lot faster. Additional, if we want to add light to our game, we may also want to change the background color. So go to your map properties in the upper section. There is a background type, which is predefined as color, and you have a color picker. So because we are talking a lot in this episode about colors, I want to explain you the basics about colors and the background color. So you have a color picker with a color line where you can choose your color primary colors from. And then you have the color area where you can choose the right or the bright colors in the upper line and the, the, the dark colors in the lower line and you can simply drag around and select your uh, the color of your choice then you see these values it's called rgb and it's simply red green blue values so every color can be combined as rgb values and you may also read uh, srgb in a um, exception message it's just simply the standard for rgb and the, color, the colors are defined in this, these three numbers between 0 and 255, which is 100%. And you can mix these three colors, red, green, and blue, as you like. You can also add a, a check the raw mode, which simply scales down these numbers to percent. So it's now between 0 and 100% red. And also, you can disable the raw mode and you have the no, this is a bug you have the hex value so this is hexadecimal which is simply the first digits are the red the third and the fourth is the green part and the last are the blue part so you have six, six digits every one from zero to nine and then a b c d e f so you have 16 values and 16 times 16 are 256 value our first expression is zero so you have we have zero to 255 to represent our colors from so simply that's it with the background color instead of making just a single color background we can also have a procedural sky where the engine helps us the designers so this prompt will help us to design our sky. So we can choose the upper sky color, which should be a blood moon red. And then it's uh, a white in the horizon. And we also go from the horizon to a green color under the ground, like this, like this, yes. And we can also define the color of our sun, which should be a bluish color for me. So. If we hold the left mouse button, we can look around in the scene preview and we can reset the camera with the reset camera button and we can invert the mouse directions. We also have the settings for latitude and longitude. The latitude is simply the angle above the ground. So zero is in a plane surface with the ground and uh, longitude uh, zero degree is the north direction. So we now see the sun. And we can choose between minus 180 degree, which is south, and plus 180 degree, which is also south. And then we have 90 degree, which is east, and minus 90 degree, which is the west. So then we can select the OK button, and uh, it sets our procedural sky to our map. So we can look around, and we can see our sun like this. So maybe we can rise it over the ground to a around about 60 degree like this. Okay, if you set this setting with the okay button, it's saved for the future. If you're unsatisfied by this, simply close the engine and reopen it and it's back to the default setting. So the last option for the background type is this as called panorama sky. So 
we need a background image which we have to put in the images folder. So you can open the image folder by right mouse button, open folder location, and place your image there. I played a little around with this and uh, JPEG or JPEG doesn't work at all. So I succeeded with a PNG and I drawed my background as a PNG with my favorite painting tool, paint.net. And I have the sun in the middle and I have a, a blue bar at the top and a green bar in the south. And this um, rectangle image would stretch over a, over a sphere. So uh, at the sky, this would be a circle and this also, and the sun is in a straight line with our ground. So let's play with this and set the panorama sky. So we select panorama sky and choose the image from our images folder and then it's applied. And now you see, the blue bar is stretched and it is now a circle and also the lower bar and the sun is in the eastern direction. No, sorry, in the south direction straight at our ground level. So that's also nice. And you maybe ask um, if I use a procedural sky or a panorama sky, have I, can I adjust the position of the sun to animate a real day-night cycle. And sadly, I have to say, no, you can't. I had a chat with um, Justin and he said, um, it's not planned for now because it's um, it takes a lot of performance and will be laggy maybe. So he has no explicit plans to make the position of the sun adjustable at runtime by scripting. So to set the lighting, set the light settings, we have to scroll down. After the fog section will be the day night cycle, and then we have the light presets. So you doesn't have any defaults. I added a few one for my setup, and you have the following options. You can save the settings from the lower sections with the save buttons, and you have a save local button, the simply disk, which saves the preset just for the single map. You also have the global save button where your preset is saved for every single map and you can also use it in the day-night cycle in the basic settings. This I will explain later. You can also apply the settings by pressing the I with the check icon and you can delete it, which doesn't work pretty well for me in the actual version 1.0.6.5. And you can change the name of your preset with the pen or pencil um, icon. So then we have the real light settings here. We start with the first one. So this is the ambient light setting. To come not into too much detail and technical thing, um, Think about ambient light setting like um, surrounding lights and, and background lights, maybe. So you have no specific direction or position of a light source. The light is everywhere and goes to everywhere, uh, like in a theater stage with thousands of spots. There is no, no corner without light. And uh, by your graphic card, it's simply made that each single voxel has a brightness and this is applied uh, unnecessary if it's, it's under a roof in the inside of a house or in a dark area or something else there is no darkness at all uh, so you can apply this this is applied to every single voxel so for the ambient light we have three settings to do we can change the color but first we have to set uh, the intensity of the directional light to zero so we have just the ambient light and nothing else to leave this field, you cannot press escape or delete or something else. You have to select a tile in your map and then click anywhere else. So it's not good at this state of the engine, but you, we can handle it with the, like this. So we can choose the color. Um, the most natural feeling is with a white color, which re uh, reflects the full spectrum of light. So the opposite is the black one, which is like there is no light. And then we can choose color tones, which are working like filters and changing 
the the full scene in this color so like uh, make it more red or more blue so um as i said the most natural one is uh, white and we will go on with this the next setting is the intensity you can imagine this as the power of your light source or the power of the intensity of your light power of your light so if you set this to zero you have no light in your scene the normal value like on earth and the most natural feeling is with the set uh, the value of one and the maximum is reached with a num a value of 16 which is a really overexposed scene like this so the last setting is the ambient occlusion so as i said we have no source of a light and we have no direction of our light but uh, you can see something like shadows right and that's a little trick it's um, the ambient occlusion which is um, simply a shader and not a real um, a real shadow so it is a static shader by the concept if you have a surface with a with a with a corner or a niche where the amount of light is um, reaching the surface is reduced there have to be shadows so there's a static amount of shadow um, added to your tiles just by the angles and not by real light um, calculation so now, now let's make a little light scripting we can change a few settings but not all we cannot change the ambient occlusion in our set uh, in our scripting so that is on or off by our map settings and we cannot handle this in script we can set the ambient light on or off we can change the color in our script and we can change the intensity to every time by just scripting so i want to show you this by um, first creating a new script and let's call it a set light so then we don't need the display message and we can choose the editor tools and set uh, the filter like this uh, light or more, more precise ambient light so that's all that these are our functions for lighting uh, we want to start with disabling our light so we drag this next to the start and then we can choose enable or disable so that's it um, if you look at the code you see all uppercase letters are here low, uh, lowercase letter and the space is changed to an underscore so we can use this and save it and now we want to apply the script that it happens in our map so how can we do this we can simply use a trigger as if on a field so um, as you see here I will release it first um, we can choose a tile and then we can set which triggers should happen so now we can use a character enters the tile or stops on the tile or exits the tile so if our character enters the tile we want to fire the execution of our script so set light and this will remove every light because it's the single light source we have so okay let's go to the map and simply step two tiles back and now it's dark okay so that's nice but we can also do this in the debug console so if we open the debug console directly uh, under the escape button we can set our code snippets so set underscore ambient underscore light underscore enabled and then simply true and bing our light is back so so you can you can use every single um, scripting function in your debug console to play with the settings and to get an, a feeling with it and also you can uh, come familiar with the coding stuff so i will make a full scripting episode i promise but at a later stage so we will cover it from scratch okay the next one is we want to change not the light enabled because it's it's we don't have to set it off and then change the color that, that's senseless so let's change the color and the intensity and now we have two ways uh, let's start with this we can change the color by the color picker as well and we can also unlock the, the 
uh, the lock and then we can use the RGB values or we can use also the hex value by FF0000 um, in quotation marks and we can change the die fade duration which is set to each of the two boxes and that's the transition time. So um, normally with a, tr a fade duration of zero, it makes bling on our red is red. So and with a transition time of three seconds, our light is sliding smoothly from the normal br uh, bright white light to the red one. So and then we can also set the intensity to two. 0.25 also in three seconds and this happens to the same time so let's try this in the code don't forget to save really important and now we see our light changed to red and also the intensity and we also can use this in the code so set uh, ambient uh, light color and now we have to create a color with the color key keyword, and then we can use the RGB values as well. So after a comma, you have to set a space, otherwise it does nothing and nothing. So we can change this and we can also use um, the second parameter, which is the optional transition time. And we can also set the intensity, intensity to 16. And also this has a second parameter, which is the transition time. So like five. So simply that's it. So and now the pretty cool stuff, we can also um, queue this events by simply use a rate function. So we can say, hey, engine, please make first the transition of the color tone and then make the transition of the intensity. Or we can mix it together. So let me show an example. We uh, want to change the color in five seconds, or let's say 10 seconds. And after five seconds, um, the reduction of the, the intensity should occur also in 10 seconds. So we can mix this up a little bit and building cues which are um, handled one after the so one by one. Okay, so I want to show you this as well. It's pretty cool to make your own scripting. So now the color changes and then it's it's become light. So oh, pretty well. And pretty cool, right? Okay, that's about ambient lighting. I want to tell you how to get this information without a tutorial. So it's pretty simple. Press the help button and then um, search for light or ambient light. So here's the documentation about light. You have the color, the energy, and something else, um, which I described before. You can also see uh, the definition of a color, how you can define colors. And um, if this isn't up to date, you can also use the online documentation, which is at rpginthebox.com slash docs. And here you can also use ambient light and you see um, the documentation about code and um, how to set this, how the, the, the objects work and yeah, the pretty complete stuff. So, and now let's go to the Directional light setting. Okay, back in the map editor. So now we want to turn off the ambient light. So we have absolute darkness and we set the angle to zero. Okay, let's start with the ambient, uh, with the directional light, of course. So first, what is directional light? So to make it simple, directional light is uh, a directional light. Um, so you can imagine like the sun, it's far, far away from our scene and it has a direction, um, but it's as far away that uh, the direction doesn't matter for specific tiles. So um, it isn't a difference in the angle from this tile at a far, far away corner or distant. So every single uh, light ray, I say light ray, but isn't re really a light ray, um, comes from the same direction to our tiles. 
So we can use it to create shadows. And we have a bunch of settings. So we have also the color and we have the intensity, which is the same. We can choose our color of the light and the intensity, which is the energy. And it's also from zero to 16. But then we have additional things. We have the vertical angle. So we had this one at a, at a procedural sky as well, which is the the angle above the ground. So now we have zero degree and it is in the plane area with our surface. And you see it clearly that we have a light source which comes from the side in our scene. Yeah, you see? So the vertical angle is now exactly to the ground. So and at 90 degree, it's uh, at the top of the sky and with my uh, 180 degree the sun is in the north and uh, normally with zero degree in the south and with minus 90 degree it's uh, i don't know it's 230 degree as 270 degree it's a little bit confusing because uh, one angle is with plus minus 180 and the other is uh, from 0 to 360. And so now we can have a light source beyond the ground. Why ever I don't have a scenario to use it, but maybe you have. So, and then we have the horizontal angle. To use this, we have to set it uh, in, a, in another position. So uh, what I want to show you, if you use a 90 degree, it's uh, it makes no difference what is the horizontal angle because the light is at the top and is rotating uh, around this, around itself. So we use a 45 degree angle. It should fit best to show you what happens. And now we see the sun is in the south and we can change the horizontal angle to 90 degree, which behaves as the sun is in the east. And if we go on to 180 degree, the sun may move over the north direction to 200, uh, 270 in the western direction, which isn't the normal case in, on Earth. So um, normally the sun works on the south, direct, uh, over the south in the west. So and then it uh, stops again in the south. So. With this, we cannot make a real day-night cycle, but there are a few options to do it and uh, handle this as well. So, but first we have additional the shadows, and the shadows are the the light is the light reduction from the tiles. So also without shadows, we have dark areas, but that is not a real shadow. Um, that is a calculation of the angle from our tile in the direction to the sun. So a tile which faces the sun is brighter than a tile which is um, directed um, to the side like this. So the, the light doesn't hit our surface. And in our marching cubes, uh, we have a little impact of the light at specific positions. So it's a little bit like shadow, but it's not a real shadow. The real shadow thing is with the shadow box, and then our um, roof makes a real shadow into our house. So we see the light, um, the light squares from the windows as well, and we can move the sun. And you have the the slider for the shadow darkness zero means there is no shadow from the roof and 100 percent means uh, every single tile um, reduces the light completely if the, the light ray hits the surface so that's about the directional light and now let's come to the scripting so then let's go to the script editor and we remove all boxes and then it's pretty the same as before, but now with directional light. So we can set it on and off, we can change the color and we can change the intensity. So we have it on and I I think I 
don't have to show you how to set it off. So let's do the cool stuff. Oh, my start. To, uh, oh no, okay. So I scrolled away. Um, directional light here. Light. Okay, so we change also the intensity and the color, and we can also um, cue this with um, with our settings. And we change the color additional to the red one in the fading duration of five seconds, and we can change the intensity also in five seconds, but without the weight section. And we can do this in our In our map, and because we have the script already set to the field, and uh, just the, the scripting code is changed, it um, updates automatically. So we can try this by simply go two tiles back, and now we see light. And if we go on our field, we see the light changes. And again, we can use the set directional light enabled to false in the brackets. False, no, that's no bracket in English. This is um, true. That is, uh, let me let me check this. It is not bracket, it is parenthesis. Okay, so and we can have set directional light color to color and then 255, 255, 255, and then 10 as well. And we can change the intensity. Intensity, intensity. To, uh, one in five seconds. So simply that's it. It's the same as the direction or the ambient light before. So okay. And again, if you want to see the documentation, go to your documentation help tab and press direct uh, type directional light, and you all again see the definition of every single setup step. The next thing is the global illumination. So now we change our light setting again to uh, mm, not, not like this. Um, directional and ambient lights to one. So we have a mix of both. And then we can use the global Ill illumination feature, which is in the current state experimental. So you can it's not proven that there is no error or bug with this. Um, the global illumination is a ray tracing feature of your um, graphic processor. So what it does is um, it calculates uh, the real light source and uh, the impact of the light at your scene. So if you set the global illumination to on, you get an improved shadow details and you get uh, something like a scattered light. So the light um, is reflected from other surfaces and you get an, an indirect uh, light between uh, these two um, buildings as well. So, and to use this feature, you have to to bake the mask. So it's it's called like this. So you have to define the subdivisions uh, the higher the subdivisions, the more precise uh, is our shadow, but it's uh, it's much darker. So we can change it to 256 and um, press OK, press Bake. And then it's recalculated and mostly a little bit darker than before. So you have to play with this and um, you can uh, check your interior, how it looks. And now we have um shadows in our in our house so we also can have the uh, the ambient light to zero which makes it more clear how the scattered light works so oh, i hate this i hate this really 
So now we have um, a very uh, smooth light, but it's really dark and um, also inside the house. So we have um, scattered light in our scares and in the corners. So it's no absolute darkness inside the house. And if we choose 64, we have a brighter atmosphere and, um, and not as precise lighting. Okay, that's about the global illumination. It works best with a mix of um, ambient light and um, directional light, in my opinion, in my opinion. Okay, the next feature is the glow feature. And the glow feature uh, brings us an illusion that our colors are very shiny and glowy. So if you add the glow features, um, surfaces directed to the light source will glow or have an, uh, an, an hollow, a sphere. So it's made with um, different spheres. I will show it. So um, to see the result, we have to set an ambient light and not a directional light. So we, if we add an ambient light, we see shiny colors. So, and here are the settings. So we have the so-called glow layers. And you can imagine this as, um, no, I stuck in the input box. Okay, we can imagine this as spheres. So imagine every single voxel has a shining effect depending on his color. So a brighter color has a more shiny effect and a darker color has no shining at all. So, and this is uh, the checkboxes are for the um, like like spheres yeah imagine you have a light white voxel and there is a, a very tiny sphere a little bigger and more and more and more in a real big sphere so if we go through the uh, if we um, play with the checkboxes you see the shining increases and increases and increases and we we should see it in these areas that the glowing rises and rises and gets more and more in in extensive. So we are here now, and now we are here in this area. And the the most glory, uh, the, 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 the heaviest glory result is by setting all boxes together. So that's uh, a, a cool feature for ambient lighting, but the real uh, power of this feature comes with the entity lighting, which we handle in the next episode. <laughs> okay. So now, how about building a real day night cycle or morning evening cycle first? So we can play with the presets and I predefined some and I give you my values. So we will start in the morning. I predefined the morning with glo as a global setting and I can um, apply the setting to my scene. So I use an ambient light with intensity one and the color C0, 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 and ambient occlusion on. And I also use a directional light with intensity two with a horizontal angle of 90 degrees. So the sun comes from the east, uh, stands in the east, and uh, has um, a vertical angle of 45 degrees over the ground with shadows and 50% uh, shadow darkness and um, Global illumination with the best subdivisions and uh, yeah, let's set a little bit glowing. So okay, like this. And additional, I have uh, another setting which is the evening setting. So let's apply this. It's also the same color and the same intensity, but the sun now is in the west, and everything else is the same. So to apply a real day night cycle, we can open the game settings and go to gameplay, day night cycle, and then we can set day night cycle to on. And now we need global settings. So you have to save this as a global setting, the planet Earth with the disk. And now we choose morning and evening. And simply that's it. And we have a, uh, yeah, not a day-night cycle. Um, let's say 20 seconds. We have a morning-evening cycle. And now um, strange thing happens. Strange things happens. 
So let's try it in the game. So we have a trigger, but it's not interesting because our day night cycle overrides our preset every 20 seconds. And now you see what, what happens. The sun is going from the east to the west to the east to the west to the east. He plays ping, uh, she plays it, the sun, it, maybe it plays ping pong. Uh, and it goes over the north, and that's not pretty cool. So, if we want to have a, a real day night cycle, we have to play with these angles, and we have to start, we look in the north, um, we have to start with. 90 degree and then go to zero degree which uh, is the moving sun over the south and then we have to jump to 360 and move further to 270 then we have to change the vertical angle in the meantime that the sun goes under the ground and it will be dark and uh, in the next morning the sun rises in the east again so we have to to queue more than two presets. But we can also have a pretty, pretty easy, easy preset, which is like a day-night cycle. Okay, let's come to this. And now we use the settings um, midday, which is uh, an ambient color as before, C0, 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 C0. Ambient color intensity is one. And then I use a uh, yellow color which makes um, a sunny day you know and uh, with an intensity of two and the sun is uh, high and uh, high in the sky and in combination with this i use my preset called night which is the ambient color reduced uh, with the same uh, color reduced to uh, 0 0.2 and I use a bluish color, it's a 19.0 D63, which uh, changes our, our uh, scene in a, in a blue, which is the most natural thing for your eyes in a, in a um, area without light or with a, a low amount of light. And an intensity of 0 0.5 and uh, the horizontal angle is... Uh, at zero and the vertical angle is on the ground so the sun is uh, at the same level as the surface with a shadow darkness of 100 percent so and now let's try this so we set as the day is the midday and the night and we use also 20 seconds and if we try this we have a really impressive example just with two settings so maybe i can change the perspective a little bit more so we have we can see more details okay so and now we have we should have a real day night so yeah and isn't that beautiful so and in the next episode we add some torches and that fits best with this. So let's make a step in the house. So, but you see, if you go in the house and you have the liar hiding, it's as there were no roof at all, and the sun uh, shines directly in our rooms. So, and we have um, light spots from our windows. It's pretty nice. Okay. And as I mentioned, we cannot change the position of the sun and, uh, and, and uh, the sky, but we can change the light setting, the presets in, in our script. So we can apply these with apply light preset. So we can choose a preset to trigger this. And as I said, I have the night. Um, we have a duration of 10 seconds. And also we can queue this together so we can use this as our trigger field again. There should be the trigger. Yeah, it's that light. And now we can, oh, no, 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 no. We have to disable the day-night cycle because otherwise it overrides our 
settings every 20 seconds. So we have now a manual applying of the manual, no, our own settings. And we have to predefine the day in the map as well. So sorry, guys. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There it is. And apply and then save it. So the last save position in our map is every time your game state. So be careful with this. So we can use this. And our scene changes. And then we can use um, apply light set. Thing. And we can use midday, I guess, and uh, 10 seconds. No, that's wrong. So let me look in the documentation. Uh, yeah, apply light preset. Apply light preset. So we can trigger this as well. Lighting. So, and that, that, this does the magic. And again, we can queue this together simply by add a weight. Add a weight. For 10 seconds and then have the next one which maybe is the, the, the midday um, apply and so we can combine several light presets to have a real day night cycle where the sun um, the sunset is in the east it goes over the south and Then goes to the west, and then um, we have the night, and the sun comes back in the in the in the east, like a normal day night cycle. And we can also combine this with setting uh, global properties to have uh, something like uh, a trigger when the the morning starts, when it's six o'clock and twelve o'clock and eight eighteen or six p.m. So like this, and we can also use loops. And uh, this gives us the power to make a full individual day and night cycle. So let's come to the last chapter. If we think about game cycles and day night cycles, we also may think about time. So what about making a calendar or something like an in-game clock? So we also can do this. There's a script reference in the help section. I prepared. So if you go to the script reference, you see global variables. And there's a global dot time which holds the, the current game time. So there's also a system time, but this is the time of the current user's operating system. So this is not what we want to do. So our game time is in the global time and is all every time between zero and the number set to this in seconds. So our game time will be between zero and 30 seconds. And now let's show the game time in game. So we can use the print method to print this to our console. So we simply write a global dot time and that's it. Let's save this and add it to the map again. So we simply use our trigger field to trigger our script like this and simply that's it. And every time we walk on the tile, we see the current game time. Like this. And it's every time in the console, so we have to open the console again and again and again. And we can avoid this. So this is a good thing for debugging stuff because the current user doesn't see your message. So uh, another one is the log message. You can also use display message, but then the character, the, the current user has to make a pause and uh, close the panel. So we can use the global 
total dot time, and you have to unlock the, the lock because uh, otherwise you simply print a string. So we can also use this. And we see the game time now in our display, like this. And it's every time between 0 and 30, as I said. So let's check this. So 30 seconds, and this is midnight. OK, and then the day begins. So we can also use this to print it again and again and again with, um, say, implement a wait method. So it doesn't print it a million times per second. And then we use a lock message to print the game time. So every second we want to print the, not, no, 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 not display, um, lock message, lock message. So, and we print global.time. So that's it. And then, because we don't want to go to the tile again and again and again, and we also don't want to trigger this every time, we wrap this in a loop. So our loop will continuously running while true. And so our expression is true, so we have an endless loop. So we shouldn't have to start it again and again and again. So we use this loop and we use a timer to reduce the, the uh, processor consumption. And then we print this to the console, uh, to, the, to the display, and we can now set our script otherwise. So we don't want to have a trigger field and start it multiple times because it's very uh, processor capacity consumption uh, consuming. And we now can set it to the post load script in the map editor. This script runs automatically after loading the map. So now we have a in-game timer, which prints current time. So, and you can have a little mathematics course and scale up the values to the, I think, uh, 86,660 seconds per, per day, and then make calculating to change this to hours, minutes, and seconds. And you can also have a global um, variables holding the year, the day, the month, and something else. Um, there are several algorithms in the in the net and the web. So simply use Google and implement it, or use a simpler feature like um, just um, trigger new days and work with days and not with hours and something else, or um, cycle or is um, queue your your day cycle um, presets to four things. Um, and then you have six hours for, per each. So that's about the lighting. I hope it was very helpful to you. And like usually, if you enjoyed this so far, give me thumbs up. I would be very excited about your subscription. And hopefully, we see us in the next episode. So bye.